Okay, I think we'll just start. Okay, so uh, hi everyone, welcome back to Hackers Toolbox. We are a very small session today, so just like, if you have anything to say or anything, you can just shout it out in the middle, uh, I think, yeah. Um, so welcome to the Vim session. Uh, I'm Raven, and the slides were originally made by Cao Wei. So um, you can access the slides at this link or at the link on the whiteboard. Actually, yeah, that's shorter. <laughs> Okay, cool. So um, I'll just be going through a short introduction to the history of Vim. Um, then uh, we'll talk about using Vim, um, why Vim is so controversial or like uh, hard to use, uh, normal mode writing in some intermediate commands, and then we'll just conclude. And then we can do like, I guess at the end, just Q&A interactive session. You can test my Vim abilities. Yeah. Uh, for new Vim? You can install new. Oh okay, yeah, so I think for Windows you can install new Vim as well. Yeah, I think like today we will be going through um, the basics. Um, I'll explain later, but um, we can expect to just learn how to get familiar with Vim, and I'll try to set you guys up for um, learning <coughs> more advanced techniques in the future. So once again, we are NUS hackers. Um, we run these few workshops. I'll give a shout out at the end. Okay, so hi, I'm Raven. Uh, I'm a year two CS undergrad, and I'm interested in um, building collaborative software and programming languages. So I've used Vim on and off for like three years. Um, I keep coming back to it. I keep going away from it. It's like a love-hate relationship. Uh, okay, so yeah, obviously you need Vim. Um, hopefully everyone has installed it. If not, it's a very small piece of software. You can install it real quick. Uh, yeah. So I guess the question today is why do we even want to learn an editor, right? We don't really like learn how to use Google Chrome. We kind of just sort of use it. So why are editors important? Well, the thing is like when you're writing code, right? You're going to spend a lot of time moving around, switching files, dealing with a lot of files at the same time. So like it's important to be able to do it fast so that you can move faster. An improvement of like maybe even 10% speed, right? is going to work wonders like when you're working on a huge piece of software and all you do is just code for the whole day. So as a power user, like in the future, when you are dealing with a huge amount of files, like it's very, very beneficial to even get a small speed up in your productivity. So today, as I mentioned earlier, we'll start with the fundamentals. Um, we'll practice. Uh, we'll, we'll have some interactive demos or like um, activities for everyone to do um, over the course of these slides. And you will be slower at first. That's the most important thing. Like to accept like the fact that like when you're using Vim, you might not be as fast as you were just using VS Code or maybe text edit or whatever other editor you use. But with enough practice, um, and if you force yourself to practice, you will find tremendous speed up just by using Vim. Yeah, so again today, we are trying to give you the fundamentals and point you guys towards the right resources to learn Vim on your own. And there's a real big rabbit hole when it comes to configuring Vim, making Vim customized, and so on. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, as with any editor workshop, we'll cover this, which is which editor should you learn and what's the best editor? Well, the answer is simply that there's no best editor. Um, you have VS Code, you have Vim, you have Emacs, you have what used to be Atom. Um, the thing is, it's completely up to you and it's what you feel comfortable with when you're using. Um, like you see here the graphic, right? Like on Notepad, yeah, sure, you'll pick it up immediately. But that's all. You are never going to become faster over time. Uh, and with VS Code, I guess the more advanced you get, the slower your editor gets because it has to load like, I guess, 200 files, right? The thing is with Vim, right, there's, there's a crazy learning curve, but the results, you can go anywhere, like for Vim and Emacs, I guess, you can go anywhere with this. So it's really what you want to, what you need at the moment. Okay, so in our brief history, uh, Vim stands for V imitation, but now it's called V improved. Wow. Uh, it was created by Bram Mulana, who unfortunately passed away like this year, I think. Uh, very sad, but uh, yeah. And it's based off another text editor, which is called V, which should also might be installed in your systems. Uh, which was created earlier by Bill Joy in 1976. So you see 1976, 1991, that's like super old when you're talking about software. 
So you can see some of the age that Vim has when you're doing it later, but everything comes from a long history of editing. Yeah, so you see, Bill Joy was trying to create an editor that was usable with, honestly, I don't know what's 300 baht or whatever, but um, it's very slow, basically. You, you, there was not a very strong internet connection. So you could only type one letter a second, and so everything had to be really, really, really efficient. Uh, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Damn, okay. Yeah. I have never used it before, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, as, as you mentioned, like, it's pretty bad. So um, Vim is optimized for speed by reducing the number of keystrokes you have to do. So what could be done by maybe five mouse clicks and like 10 letters in VS Code, right, can usually be done much more efficiently in Vim. So yeah, see, when you optimize heavily to minimize keystrokes, it turns out you have a really efficient editor. So um, one of the reasons that Vim is so beneficial is because when you're working on software projects, a lot of the time you might be not working on your own computer. You'll be working on a Linux server somewhere, or you might be working on a system that you don't have access, you don't have full access to, right? You, you SSH into it. Yeah, for example, in your CS2030S, for those taking it soon, like you're not gonna have access to the gigantic mainframe that SOC has, right? You're gonna be SSH uh, remotely connecting into it. And the thing is, for that, you just straight up can't use VS Code. You don't have a desktop, you can't uh, op open the search bar and open up VS Code. You have to do everything through the terminal. And the thing is, Vim pretty much works anywhere that has the Unix-based system. Uh, yeah, you'll find it on Linux, you'll find it on um, all, all the most of the distros of Linux, you'll find it on Mac. And the thing is, it's also very customizable and programmable. And there's often, like the moment you Google something, you'll find it. That's how old, that's how beneficial it is to use really old software. Um, there's a huge community and plugin support. Um, and I guess to round up like the introduction, uh, Vim comes with a different, very different paradigm from like your standard editor. So when you open up a file in your VS Code today, right, what happens? You're looking at the file, you press delete, you delete a few characters, you start typing immediately. But the thing is, Vim doesn't have that basic, um, like you're not just editing a file, you are, um, you have modes in, all, in which to interact with a file. So we'll talk about each mode later, but when you're manipulating text, it's often different, it's a different mode altogether. You're in a different mindset from when you are typing stuff. Because typing is just like, okay, sure, typing words. But what if you want to move something here? What if you want to uh, imagine your text, being able to drag and drop your text as you go? So that, that's how cool Vim can be. And that's how cool like the philosophy of being a modal text editor, where you have different modes can get you to. Uh, yeah, there's some really good content here. So I guess the idea is here is that you tend to spend more time reading and making smaller edits instead of writing big essays, right? That's more for code, I guess. Okay, so now we'll get started. Okay, so this was the modes I was talking about earlier. So Vim has, uh, I guess, four modes that are the most useful. So there's normal mode for manipulating and making small little edits. There's insert mode, which is for writing. There's visual mode, which is for selecting blocks. And there's command mode for entering commands. So four modes, we'll just cover four modes today. There are more modes, and honestly, I do not know them either because I mainly just use these four. Um, okay, maybe one or two extra. So, yeah. So the thing is, what's cool about mode is that pressing the same key, for example, X, in a different mode will result in a different action. So imagine you have your keyboard, right? Your keyboard has around, I don't know, 60 something, 70 something keys. The thing is, with VS Code or like any other editor, you have 70, 60 something possible actions that you can do with the same keyboard. But with the idea of modes in place, you suddenly have four times the amount of actions you can do, which means that you can probably press one key and have less keystrokes. Uh, you can probably press one key and have the correct action if you're already in the correct mode. Uh, we'll see what it means later, but for now you can see that X, for example, X in insert mode will literally type X. It will insert the character X. But in normal mode, it will delete the current selection. It will X away the current character. So you can see that there's two different actions for the same key press. We'll see something like that later. 
Okay, so uh, now to start off, maybe we can get everyone to open Vim. So um, for those of you running, uh, not using GVim, if you're just using a terminal, you can open a terminal and type Vim, right? And then you just press enter. And then you're like, oh no, uh, I'm typing, right? But, but how do I quit, right? So this is the common joke that everyone complains about, like, how the hell do you quit Vim, right? Uh, whoops. Oh yeah, okay, so I've, I've, I've configured this like thing so you can see what I'm pressing because today is very keystroke dependent. So if you're very curious what I'm typing at the moment, you can just check like the bottom left of the screen. See? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, I can say hello. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, yeah. So how do you quit Vim? Very simple. Uh, I have a slide for that. <laughs> You're not able to type. Yeah, so exactly right. Like what ha what's going on? Okay, so um, to answer your question directly, you are in normal mode. And remember what you said, normal mode is not for writing text, it's for manipulating text. We'll learn how to do that later. But for now, let's go into command mode by pressing colon. And you can see at the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah. If, you are, uh, if, you if you press colon and it types a colon, right? You can press escape a few times. Just, just for good measure, and then press colon. Yeah. So now we have a colon, right? You type Q, and then you press enter. Oh, sorry. You press Q. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whoops. So you press Q and you type question uh, exclamation mark and you press enter. And congratulations, you're back. <laughs> So hopefully that answers the age-old question of what to do when you're stuck in Vim. Okay, the end, bye-bye. Oh, it didn't work? Oh, it didn't work? Okay, again, right, so if you're in here, right, and you see insert, okay, you press escape. If you see insert here, you press escape, colon, and then Q, exclamation mark, and then enter. So already you're seeing, we are slower now. We are taking so long to just to quit the thing, right? What the hell is going on? Slowly, slowly, we all learn, we all learn. The thing is, how do you tell which of the four modes you are in? Yeah, okay, so... Um, insert mode, is it? Yeah, okay, so... Sorry, we used to call this command mode in school. Yeah. Okay, so how do you tell, yeah, okay, I think you raised out a good point. How do you tell uh, what mode we're currently in, right? So usually, usually for insert and visual mode, you will see it written at the bottom left. So this is insert mode, and this is visual mode. Okay, this is, sorry, whoops, this is visual mode, right? And most of the time, uh, if you don't see anything there, you are in normal mode. Okay, but if you see a colon at the bottom, for example, you see a colon at the bottom now, you're in command mode. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that later soon. Okay. Okay, so... I'm not able to see anything at the bottom. At the bottom. Yeah, okay, yeah, so by default, if you're in normal mode, you are normal. So you can't see anything at the moment, yeah. You will not see anything. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, so when you're in normal mode, right? Um, yeah, so most of the time you'll be in normal mode, right? So the idea with, with Vim, right, is that you're often going to be in normal mode, you're going to switch to another mode to do something, and then you're going to return to normal mode. Okay, so this is the base concept of, this is how modal text editing is applied onto like normal situations. Don't worry, don't worry. It might be confusing now, but we will have exercises to teach you. Okay, so we've just experienced normal to command mode. So command mode is done by going f by being in normal mode and then pressing colon. So I'm in normal mode right now. I press colon, I'm in command mode. Right, so I can run commands here. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so um, if you press escape, you go back to normal mode. So most of the time, you'll be pressing escape to go back to normal mode from different modes. 
Okay. Yeah. I see you smiling. Okay, so it is gonna be confusing, but we will get there. Okay, so command quit. So what does Q stands for quit? Okay, and exclamation mark stands for force quit. Like force, like to force it to quit, yeah. So just now when I type something already, it thinks that I'm editing a file and it doesn't allow me to quit because it doesn't want me to, want my changes to disappear. It's like Microsoft Word saying, are you sure you're exit? Yeah. Close it, right? Yeah. It's like the are you sure dialogue pretty much. You want to discard your changes. Yeah, so. Discard your changes. Yeah. Yeah, so if I quit like this, it will discard whatever the AWH, blah, blah, blah. It's going to disappear completely. Okay. So we have a few more commands here that we're going to learn. So W means write, and it's going to write to the file. Uh, exclamation mark means force an action. And WQ, you can start to see a bit of like, like composition here. WQ means write and then quit. I don't know if QW works. You can try. But WQ means write and then quit. And this means force quit. So this is what we just learned, okay? Yeah, okay, I can show right now. So if I vim and I say uh, hello.txt, this means I'm going to edit the file called hello.txt. If it does not exist, will it create it? Yes, so if it doesn't exist, it will create the file. When you write. When I write, when you write to it, only when you write to it. So right now, if I do here, if I go here, right, and I go to the same folder, if I list, you can't see the file that there's no hello.txt. Uh, well, there's the SWT there, okay, yeah, so uh, this is slightly more advanced, but basically Vim maintains like a, like a temporary file to store whatever your changes are. So this is not hello.txt. So how do you create hello.txt? You press colon, you press W, enter. And now if you see, hello.txt has been created. We have written to the file hello.txt. What have we written? Absolutely nothing, because we haven't thought how to edit files yet. We'll learn that soon, okay? Can we go into the and then, uh, name? Uh, yes. So you can actually write and then the file name instead. So I can write uh, test.txt. So test.txt, and I, it will create the file also. So now if I quit and I list, we have test.txt here. Uh, I'm just going to remove it. Okay, so that is normal. That is basically command mode. We will have more commands later, but command mode is about pressing colon, typing a command, and then pressing enter to run that command. But the behavior is not the same as doing save as MS mode. What happens is if you had a file, 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 yeah. When you do write, right? The write command second parameter is just telling you to write all these changes to the given file. Yeah. Without yeah. any parameter, it defaults to the current file. Right. And so that means that you will not continue editing in the new file. You will, be con you will continue editing in the existing file. Oh, yeah. yeah. So write doesn't mean, doesn't change the file you're editing. I think he'll talk about a different command which will change the file you're editing. Right. But write only tells you write the whatever contents in the current, current file you're editing to yes. that location. Yeah, take it, yeah, take it. Yeah. yeah, so I think um, I think his point is that um, it doesn't behave exactly the same as save as command, so take note of that. Um, there are some intricacies and some slight differences, but I think overall what this command does is it writes to a file. Okay, so again, normal mode is your default mode. If you're not sure or you get lost or some reason nothing is working, right, always just press escape a few times. It will bring you back to normal mode. And then you can just continue as per usual. So escape brings you back and like resets you to everything. So you may ask like why is escape the main key to like exit or like to, to, to go back to normal mode? It's so far away, like why is it so annoying? 
So it turns out that um, in very old days, escape was actually placed much more conveniently like on your keyboard. So you can see escape is like here. Um, right, so this is much more convenient to press than like where escape is now. So sometimes people map their caps lock key um, to escape. So I personally use caps lock to type. I'm one of those crazy people. So I don't, I just press escape manually. But for those people, like you can go and search, like you can use caps lock as your escape key instead by do using some other software. So this is just like FYI. Yeah, I'm. It is on a terminal, so <laughs> those keys didn't exist. Uh, yeah. Well, it depends how old your terminal is. But this is a pretty old terminal. <laughs> yeah. You can use control open square bracket. That's that's easy. Con control open square bracket. Okay, let's try. Control. That's the opening key. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's oh, that's the that's control. Open. That's cool, I did not know that. Okay, so instead of escape, you can press control and this right. Oh, whoops, okay. Yeah, it will show you on the bottom left quite clearly. <laughs> yeah, so that's like an alternative to escape. Thank you. Maybe, maybe that's... Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, now let's talk about changing modes, right? So we've seen command mode, which is colon. Again, press escape to go back. Now I'll teach you guys how to go into insert mode, which is simply pressing I. Okay. So now I press escape to go back. And can anyone guess what the key is to go into visual mode? V. Wow, okay. Intuitive. <laughs> so V goes into visual mode, I goes into insert mode. Okay, there are a few more ways, as you can see here, there's <coughs> all the vowels except E, but... Uh, okay, there's no U, thanks. <laughs> okay, but there's A and O, so we'll talk about the differences. Um, I think we'll talk about them later. But um, yeah, so you can... There's all these ways to go into insert mode, but just remember, I for insert, V for visual. So there's a few different visual modes. Um, there's visual line, which is shift V, which is capital V basically. And then there's um, control V, which is visual block mode. Again, I'll go through these a bit later. Okay, uh, let me just go through insert mode real quick. So if you notice, right, if you press I, you're in insert mode, you can actually just start typing. And this is how you actually type in Vim. So now you have the basics down. You can backspace, you can press escape. I go back into insert mode. I go uh, hello world again. I press escape. I cannot like go, if I want to insert something between the two hello worlds, I cannot like. So I'll go back, is it? So for now you can use the arrow keys. Yeah. Mouse doesn't work. Mouse doesn't work. Mouse, does mouse work? Oh, mouse doesn't work. Okay, yeah. So. Oh, uh, thanks. One thing to know, right, is that your mouse doesn't work. Why? Because there was... I think it's because there was no mouse in those days. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, that's it. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, there was no mouse. You can enable mouse support, but like when you're connected to like a server, mouse support doesn't work then because your server doesn't have a mouse. So generally, most people use Vim without mouse. Yeah, okay, so... Even though your terminal Vim can has mouse support built in, except if you're running locally. If you're running remote, mouse doesn't work. If you enable mouse support, yeah. Okay, so right. Um, so now let's practice a bit. Um, yeah, so now let's talk about navigating in normal mode. Okay, so um, let's, te yeah, let's teach you how to move into the middle of the words you have typed. So we can go into Vim and maybe just type hello world a few times. Um, maybe create some on, oh gosh. <laughs> okay, so now we have this. How do we move around? Okay, so it turns out that in the past there was no arrow keys either. So the keys that were used to move around in normal mode are H, J, K, and L. 
The key's on your right hand. So H goes left, K goes up, J goes down, and L goes right. Okay? So the thing is, if you are people, if you are those like people who like type, who do this like type, who type properly using like the home row and stuff, those keys will be exactly on your right hand already. So like, it's very convenient and it's probably why they chose those keys to be the arrow keys. Yeah, so why not arrow keys? Because historically, those keyboards do not have arrow keys or a mouse. Uh, yeah, and in practice, it's quite efficient because it's somewhere near where your right hand is usually usually is on a keyboard. So notice that by default, right, um, your vims will look pretty bad. So we can actually just um, configure it a little such that it looks a lot nicer. So if you visit this link, uh, let you guys type it for a while. So if you visit this link, it will bring you to this file, okay? So we can just copy it, and then edit the file called, okay, so we use this, using what we already know, we do vim, and then we edit the file vimrc. So vimrc stand, is the file for configuring vim. So all configurations go into a text file called vimrc. So if you press enter, Okay, you can see mine is editor already, but I'll just delete it for now. So, enter, and you enter insert mode. You can actually just paste the file that you just copied by pressing your normal uh, Control shift v or Command v How, how do you go into uh, dot slash, slash So you can run this command. If this like fails with some weird error, you can ask or can ask us. Yeah. When you open yours, yours most likely will be blank. But um, yeah. No, no, is it blank? By default. Yeah. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so if you open yours, you'll be blank. Just now I, I was testing out the configuration. That's why it looks a bit different. Yeah, so if you run this, and you press enter, it'll be blank. Okay, then you press I to insert, and then you paste in Command V or Control Shift V, whatever you copied from the link. Uh, the link being this one. Uh, the link is here. Oh. Now, like all subsequent memes would be highlighted or just this one? Will be highlighted. Uh, so next time when you open the Vim file, uh, when you open the Vim program, it will read from this file, and it will say, "Okay, yeah, uh, I want highlighting." Yeah. And I want number, and I want relative number, and I set mouse and so on. Okay, so when you save, right, press escape, colon, W, enter, and it writes to the file. So now, if you try to, uh, if you quit Vim, colon Q, and you type Vim, Vimrc again, you run the same command, you'll see that it looks a lot nicer now. Again, again, I'm using H, J, K, and L to just move around the file. All good. But like this doesn't change like other uh, Vim instances, right? Uh, it change it changes all Vim instances that you open. So now if I edit a C file, for example, I edit a C file. Uh, 
You can see that it's highlighted as well. So don't worry about the rest of the editing. Just focus on getting your syntax, uh, getting your syntax enabled. Okay. So now that that's done, uh, we can move on. to download the repo or something. Hmm. Should I put it in the telegram message? Yeah. That's fine. How's your internet? Camera. Camera. Okay, so now we can learn how to manipulate text in normal mode. Okay? So, I guess the first thing we can do is just open up our Vimasi again. So we're just using this as like a template file that we can use. Okay? So now, again, can practice going up and down. So that's under basics. H, J, K, and L goes left and down, up and right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, if you don't want this weird numbering system, you can just go to the bottom of the file. And then delete this, uh, this, this line that says relative number. So how you delete a line, uh, I'm skipping past a bit, but how you delete a line is you just press D, which stands for delete, and then just press D again. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just go back. So now, how do you move word by word? Okay, so Vim allows you to move word by word instead of just character by character. How do we do that? We move, we press W to move word by word instead of line by line, uh, instead of character by character. So you see, L only moves one character, but I can press W to move one word by one word. So how do I do the reverse? I can press B. So again, W standing for word, moves word by word, and B moves backwards, word by word. So how, how do you move by file now? Okay, so for file, GG goes to the top of the file, and capital G goes to the bottom of the file. Uh, I'm not sure what G stands for, uh, but can just Google it, I guess. Yeah, so you see, pressing capital G goes all the way to the end of the file, and GG goes to the start of the file. Yeah, so you can do that, but you see, so, so he mentioned that you can press colon zero to move to the start of the line, but um, that's valid, but remember the whole purpose we're trying to do here, uh, maybe for nothing, maybe for fun, but it's to save keystrokes. And this is two keystrokes. While typing this is three keystrokes. <laughs> yeah, and it's a different mode as well. Yeah, so we're learning about normal mode now. So GG and G. So now, if you want to move by line, we can actually do dollar sign to move to the end of the line and carrot to move to the start of the line. Uh, carrot is the... Yeah, shift six, yeah. So end of the line is dollar sign and start of the line is carrot. So the reason is so is because um, in Vim, they, we have strong support for like regex, regular expressions. And in regular expressions, carrot indicates the start of the line and dollar indicates the end of the line. So let's say there's some white space. So I'm going to introduce some white space here, right? So dollar actually moves to the end of the line, sure. 
Carrot moves to the start of the line, while Zero moves all the way to the start of the line. So Carrot moves to the start of the line with white space. But Zero moves to the start of the line without white space. So again, the cheat sheet is here. You can download the slides, um, and it's all there. It's a lot to remember, I know. So um, over time, you'll get used to it. So now, one thing that's cool is that Vim allows you to jump instantly to any line in your program. So how do you do that? Uh, someone give me a line number to jump to. Seven. Okay, uh, seven first, I guess. So seven, you press seven, and you press capital G. And now you're on line seven. Okay, it might not look like line seven, but this is actually line seven. Okay, if I'm going to line nine, I press nine, and then I press capital G. Line 20? Wonderful. Yeah. So suddenly you see that you're a lot, you can become a lot faster now just by these simple commands because we are not worried about accidentally editing text because we are in normal mode. Yeah. Sorry? I mean the seven is hidden behind. I mean if you then maybe type type like six and seven and you Oh you don't know what you type, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. So that's a good question. So um how do you remember what you type, right? Like, I guess when you're moving fast, you just tend to remember. And if you don't remember, you can press escape and then start again. So if I type 33 and I forgot, oh no, I forgot 33, right? You can just press escape and then type 33 again. And then you're, okay, there's no line 33, but yeah, you get the idea. So the same concept applies to moving up and down. So how do I move 13 lines up? I type 13 and I press K, which is up, right? So suddenly you see the point of these weird numbering systems. So let's say I want to move to enable line, enable mouse scrolling, this line, right? Oops. Okay, let's say I want to move to the line enable mouse scrolling. I can just type 12 and J. And then I instantly move to that line. So how do I move to this line, enable syntax highlighting? Well, you can just type 18K and it goes 18 lines up. Uh, yeah, so um, we'll talk about search a bit later. Yeah, yeah no worries. So again, then we have screen. So H moves to the mid, uh, high part of the screen, M moves to the middle part of the screen, and L moves to the low part of the screen. So braces, okay, so this is an interesting one. Um, maybe you can type uh, hello. So for example, if we are programming in most languages, uh, for this one, you can just go into insert mode and type. I'm not doing anything special here. But imagine we're at this brace, and there's like a whole bunch of functions here, uh, like this maybe, right? Sorry, it's a bit covering. Okay, as you can see, right, we're in a function, okay? I want to move to the end of the function. How can I do that? I can just press percent, and now I'm suddenly at the bottom of the, f at the other parentheses. I can have some more stuff here also. So you can see percent jumps me between the parentheses. No, so these are normal mode. So remember, normal mode is to navigate around the file really quickly and make small edits. Like, uh, when you wrote, you went into insert mode. Oh, uh, yes, correct. So when I'm typing, I go into insert mode. I type hello, I press escape, and then I'm back in normal mode and I can move around again. So percent again goes between braces. Very convenient. I can even go from hello, and I can press percent, and it goes to the next brace, which is this parentheses. If I'm here, I can press percent and I go down. Okay, so scrolling really quickly, um, you notice that mouse scroll works a bit weirdly. It doesn't, it, it feels wrong. Like it just feels wrong. You can try it yourself. So how do I scroll really quickly? You can press control U in normal mode and it goes up by half a page. Uh, half a page, right? Yeah. And control D goes down by half a page. So this is a quick way of browsing through the file. Okay. 
So now we know how to navigate. Let's talk about searching, which is an alternative way to navigate. Yeah. Control F. Yeah, I think Control F goes page by page. So Control D goes down by half a page, or D for down, and Control F goes forward by a full page. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about searching, All right? So how do we get? How do we? Sorry, yeah. How do you like select multiple lines of the description? Okay, yeah. So now we're focusing on getting around a file. We'll talk about editing a file very soon. Okay. So. Let's say I want to move to the first G, this G, right? Sure, I can press 5L and I move to the G, right? But how do I get there even quicker? I don't want to type L, 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 L five times, right? Yeah, or count, five, count to 5 and then 5L, right? So I can type F, which finds the first instance of a character, and I press G. So I go to the first G. How do I get to the first O? I go F, O, and I'm at O. Okay? Capital F does the reverse. It goes backwards. So, capital F, O, brings me to the O backwards. If What happens if there's nothing? Let's say I type F, R, for example. Capital F, R, it doesn't move. Simple. So, F, T, F, G, F, R, goes to the correct character. So now this is within a single line. How do I search the whole, uh, the whole, the whole file basically? Well, you can type slash, and it goes to this search mode, and then whatever you want to find. So let's say insensitive, insensitive, insensitive. Okay, you're still in this mode. So how do you get out of this mode? Press enter, and now you're in insensitive. Okay. Yeah, correct. Good question. So now you can type, for example, set, right? So I press enter, it goes to the first set. How do I go between sets? I press N. And it goes between all the sets. Uh, previous result, capital N. So I go backwards now. Uh, so indent. So this thing doesn't understand words. So you see, indent just goes through all the indents. It doesn't understand that indentation is a word. Uh, there are more advanced searches you can do. For example, I can say, I want indent to be at the end of a line using, using regular expressions, but that's beyond the scope of today. So indent, for example. And it conveniently tells you search hit bottom as well. Okay, how do I search upwards? So sometimes, um, sometimes I want to search to this indent because now, right now, if I search indent and I press enter, I was here, right? So I moved all the way around the file and I came back to the top. But how do I search backwards? Now this might seem trivial, like why can't you just search to the top of the file and press N a few times, right? But remember guys, we're saving keystrokes. So you can press question mark and it will search the opposite direction. Now I'm at the bottom. And now pressing N goes upwards instead and pressing capital N goes downwards instead. Yeah, so now we can do things like, for example, I want to comment out this set ruler command. Well, I can do it multiple ways. I can just do 11J uh, BB to get to the start of the line and press quotation mark. And I've edited it. Alternatively, from here, I can type slash ruler, go to the correct ruler, press B, and then comment it out. Yeah, zero works too. Yeah, so uh, I actually don't know a key binding for this, so I usually just slash and then search something that doesn't exist. Okay, fine. Uh, colon NOH. Okay, so for example, okay, let's teach the proper way. So ruler, right? So you do colon NOH, and then it just removes the highlighting. Unless you type N again, then you'll come back. You know when you search ruler and it and it's lighted up yellow, right? Yeah. Is it going to be lighted up yellow forever? So we can just do colon NOH. Uh, it stands for no highlight, I think. No, no highlight. Yeah, no highlight. And then you press enter and it disappears. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you search using this, and then this goes into command mode, not normal mode, and you type NOH. Okay, moving on. So now let's learn how to edit files. Finally, we can be more useful using Vim. Okay, so remember all the, I was talking about how insert mode, you can go into insert mode using all the vowels possible except uh, E and U. Okay, so here we're going to learn the differences between each of them. And there are many differences. So let's go to here. Okay, so I, small i, inserts where your cursor is currently at. So this means that since the cursor is a block usually, this means you're inserting to the left of the block. So if I press I and I press A here, uh, sorry, I press maybe uh, C for example, you can see that it inserts to the left of the block. Okay. So now if I press capital I, it jumps straight to the start of the line and you can type from there. Okay. Now, now you might be wondering, how do I edit? Like if I press I here, right? I can't type beyond the E. Notice that. How, whoops. How do I edit to the right of my cursor? Well, you can press A and now you can edit to the right of the cursor. A stands for append. I knew that. So A stands for append. Okay. So insert and append. And then you can start typing. Capital A inserts all the way to the end of the line. Just like capital I inserts all the way at the start of the line. So how do you immediately create a new line? So this one is super, super, super useful for coding. How do you create a new line? You press O and it immediately creates a new line and puts you in insert mode. How do I? Yeah, call him. Sorry, the food is coming. Okay, uh, how do I create a line above the current line? I press capital O instead. So you can see that the small letter and the capital letter do slightly different things, but they all have the same concepts in mind. And remember, to get out of insert mode, you press escape. Okay, so here comes the true, the first powerful idea you can see in Vim. So D stands for delete, right? But how do you delete things quickly? Okay, so sure you can DD like I told you earlier to delete a whole line, right? By the way, U is undo. Uh, I'm going to use that a lot, so just explain it to you guys. But how do I delete a word? Well, we just learned how to move by a word. Why can't I just delete by a word? How do I delete two words? Or two Correct. Two times of DW, and I delete two words. In this case, uh, it considers this a word. So uh, it does that. Okay, delete two words. You can do D2W also. I find that easier to remember. So delete two words, and it deletes two words. How do I delete two characters? DW full stop? Yeah. How do I delete two characters? Okay, that works too. But I can delete two and I move right by two characters. How do I move right? I press L, right? So I can delete two times to the right. Does DK work? Oh yeah. How do I delete the current line and the line above it? I press D and I move up the cursor. How do I delete four lines above it? D4K. Oh, sorry, that's two. Uh, D4K. Yep, you're right. So suddenly you see that a lot of the concepts that we just learned are coming together. How do I delete from here to the end of the line? Okay, let me just hide this. <laughs> How do we move to the end of the line? Okay, it was dollar sign. Okay, this one admittedly is a bit harder to remember. Dollar sign, right? Well, I can now delete to the end of the line. And it works. Delete to the start of the line, delete to the start of the line. So you can combine the delete command 
with whatever navigation we've just learned and we've just doubled the number of actions we, we know how to use. So remember how we were searching for a character on the line? So now how do I delete to the S character on this line? So let's say I want to do this. I want to do the equivalent of this. Uh, this. Okay? How do I do that? Oh, sorry. Uh, how do I do delete to the first S character? How do I search for the first S character? Okay, the answer is F. Remember, F, S goes to the first character. So now, from here, from anywhere on this line, I can do D, F, S, and I immediately delete to the first S character. And you get the idea. Anything you can do with a movement command, you can delete using that movement command as well. So again, I want to delete five lines, D, 5, J, and I delete five lines. So on and so forth. Fun fact, you can do this with insert as well. So if I want to insert five, five hellos, I can just do five insert, hello, and when I press escape, oh, it doesn't work. Oh yeah, it does. I insert five hellos. Again, I, oh sorry, five, I, hello, escape, takes a while, but it inserts five hellos. So these kinds of combinations are always possible. You can try to find them out. Sometimes they don't work, uh, but they most of the time they work, okay? So now how do I delete? Okay, so you see I have this hello, 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 and all this weird stuff at the end of the file, right? How do I delete to the end of the file? Uh, wrong, that's to the end of the line. Yeah. Correct. D, capital G. And it deletes the current line as well. Wonderful. Okay, you write the file. Okay, one more convenience character. Pressing X just deletes one character straight away. Yeah, it deletes the character currently under your cursor. So for example, if I is under my cursor, I press X, it just deletes I. So, okay, cool. Okay, one more, one more cool thing. So on top of delete, what if we want to delete and insert something new? We have the C command, the change command. So instead of deleting a word and then pressing insert and then adding, a, adding something else, hello, I can simply change a word, change a word. Now I can immediately start typing hello and press escape and the word is change. So instead of deleting a word, I can change a word. So change basically deletes and puts you in insert mode immediately. Saves one keystroke, but I decided to create one more command for it. Why? For, for speed. <laughs> okay, so I can change to the end of the line by pressing dollar sign and start typing I can change five lines down and start typing, same concept. So this is pretty much the same as delete, except that it puts you in insert mode, so I won't talk too much about it. But the same idea of combining navigation and actions apply. Okay, one more important thing, copying and pasting. Okay, so in the past they didn't call it, okay, this one I'm not so sure whether it's a history thing or just the guy's weird thing, but um, they don't call it copy, they call it yanking. Okay? Literally yank. Okay, that's why it's Y. But paste is still paste, which is P. Okay, so how do I copy a line? So how do I delete a line? DD. No, uh, DD deletes the whole line, wherever you are in the line. So DD, wherever I am, I press DD, I delete a line. So how do you think I can copy this line? Correct, YY. So YY copies the entire line. And how would I paste the line? Okay, no, just P. <laughs> yeah. Paste it twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Yank copies a line into the bar, uh, into the clipboard and then P paste it. Yes, so Okay, so right, there is no actual cut because delete is actually cut. So if I delete this line now, I go all the way down and I paste it, 
it actually pays the line. So there's no cut and there's no delete because they are actually the same thing. Okay? So how do I copy three words? Why three what? Why three W? Correct. Why three W copies three words and I paste. Oh, whoops. Let me go to the end of the line, I paste. Uh, y three W. Okay, make it clearer. Paste. Paste, 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 paste. Correct. So all the same, all the same stuff apply. Yank, yank, yank. Okay, and if you want to paste above instead of below, same thing. You press capital letter and it paste above. Okay, not very visible. P paste below. Capital P paste above. Okay. So that's copying and pasting. Okay, and then uh, you can also replace a single character. So let's say I want to replace this with uh, Z for some reason. I can just press R and then Z. And then it replaces a single character. Why? Why do that? I could just insert, delete, and then replace it. Well, it saves a lot of keystrokes. Okay, so again, there's, uh, let's say I did some uh, boohoo, messed up somehow. I can just press un U to undo, and I can press Control R to redo. Okay, I don't know. That one you can ask. I think redo, maybe people use it less. Yeah. Yeah, because R is taken up, I guess. I don't know. Replace. Uh, for all systems, it should be control. Well, not command. Yeah, I, when, again, I think when Vim was created, there was no command. There was only control and shift. Okay. Okay, so uh, we've reached. Okay, we are about halfway through. Um, so let's do an activity, and I think we can just eat here, right? Okay, we can do the activity, and y'all can eat while doing it, I guess, if you want to. Yeah. We have a lot of food today um, since there's so few of us, so just enjoy. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'll just download this file and then we can. Uh, okay, so hopefully, right, we have this file. Okay, and let's start. Let's try to uh, let's try to edit this with as few keystrokes as possible. Okay, so the first error I can see is editing. Okay, so. Uh, hmm, what is the fastest way? So when I look at it, right, um, maybe not the fewest keystrokes, but I'll usually just maybe type eight words. Okay, I'm around there. Okay. Hmm? No la. I mean like just for fun la. Okay. Okay, aggravation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think over time you get very good at counting, <laughs> like or estimating, I guess. Okay. Then usually I would just. I guess um, find the first T and then just press X and then find the first G and then press X. So that's done. Now I can move one line down. I think this is just a duplicated line. So we can just delete it. So then we can go down and I think the issue with this is that the last part of the line is a colon and not a full stop. So anyone can tell me what's the fastest way to get rid of the colon? Okay, dollar sign? X. X? Dollar sign R dot. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so I was thinking of, yeah, yeah, you're right, you can just replace it, R dot. Okay, so this one wasn't taught just now, but um, if we go down and then we go to the start of the line, 
Uh, you can actually change the case of this in one keystroke, which is tilde. So that just makes it capital. So if I hold it, you can see. Oh, whoops! You can hold it. You can see that it just changes everything to. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, hold on. <laughs> Does it? Oh yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So it works reverse also. So it actually toggles the case of a character. Yep. So now I can go down and. Um, I see that um, there's a there's a D right. So you can just do. Okay, wait. How would how would y'all do this? How would you fix this error? Eleven W for ten W. Eleven W. Okay. Okay. So um, in this case, usually if I'm too lazy to count and I type decently fast, I'll just do slash, uh, like this, and then I just R S, and then that replaces it. Um, eleven W works just as well. And Vim even avoids the arrow keys because it requires too much movement. So I can yeah I can just press dollar and then B and then most of the time actually I don't really like go and edit individual characters. So I'll just change the whole word to movement. Yeah. There's a word which has an apostrophe in it counts two words. Let's see. So uh Vim's right? Okay. One, two, three. Yeah, so the apostrophe counts as a word, thanks. It counts as its own word. Yeah. So another way to go to the end of a word is to press E that wasn't covered. So you have W which goes to the start of a word and then E that goes to the end of words. And then B to go backwards. Okay, cool. Did anyone else spot a mistake that I didn't see? Of course I'm... Sorry? Uh, okay. Uh, what's the mistake? This one is it? Seven. F <laughs> this word, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that's correct, though. Uh, oh, oh modo is it? No, yeah. It's like mode. <laughs> mode, 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 modo. Okay. So that's cool. Okay, let's move on. Uh, no, for movement, I just CW to change the whole word. Yeah. I, 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 can, I think I type decently fast, so like for me, it's often better to just change whole words than to R individually. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm just, when I say least keystrokes, I'm just saying like for fun. Obviously, in practice, you won't go and count everything. But yeah, like. This is all in good fun. Okay, so anyway, intermediate vim. So let's go into visual mode. We are going into our fourth mode of the day and fourth and final mode of the day. So in my opinion, this is one of the coolest modes. Hey, eh? it's after right? Yeah, it's somewhere in the slide. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so visual mode, and also uh, some new commands. So let's say I'm already in vim. Uh, okay, so I am in this directory, okay, and I do vim um, errors.txt, right? Now, how how do I edit a new file without exiting vim? Let's say I want to edit errors2.txt. So actually, there's a command for that. There's e errors2, if I can spell, uh, errors2.txt, and e stands for edit. So actually, if you just press edit, it works too. And I'm editing a new file. It hasn't been created yet. Only It's only created when I press colon W and press enter. So this is a new errors file. Whoa. Okay. So Vim actually supports editing multiple files at the same time. So how do we do that? We can do colon and VSP, which stands for vertical split. And it splits in half. Okay, so by default, this always just edits the same file. So if you see I edit this side, the other side will change as well. Okay, so how do I edit two different files at the same time? I just use the same edit command. It's getting annoying. Oh. Edit command errors.txt. 
I can press tab, enter, and now I'm editing two files at the same time. Okay, so, so just now VSP was vertical split. I can create a horizontal split by typing just SP, which is just split. Does HSP work? It does not work. Okay, so split and vertical split. So now I can edit a third file, um, cities.csv. And nice, we're there. How do you toggle between the files? Okay, yeah, so this one, uh, I think, I feel like it's just memory work, but Control w turns on window toggling, and then you can just press K to go up. So to go down, so HJKL again are the movement keys, right? Uh, you can just press Control w j to go down, Control w l to go right, and then Control w h to go left. So now I'm editing here, then I can go here, and then just paste a few times, I can go up, and then edit, so on and so forth. So those are splits. So now you see if I press colon Q, it only quits the current split. If I want to quit everything at once, I type QA, which is Q, quit all, and it quits everything. Okay, so... Okay, uh, let me check. Okay, it's not shown here, but um, let me show again. So I'm editing the left side now. You can see my cursor. Control W. And the thing is, there's no like how fast I'm doing this thing. Now I press Control W, I press Control W, and now I just press a single direction. In this case, I press L, which is to the right. So Control W, left. If I have a vertical split, Control W, J, which goes down. Control W, K, which goes up. So H, J, K, L, up, down, left, right. Uh, left, left, down, up, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's not Control W, Control L, it's just Control W, L. So Q, A again to quit everything at once for convenience. Now I'll show everyone visual mode. So if we go back to errors.txt, here's where Vim gets even cooler. Okay, so we have visual mode to make it more familiar. Oh, sorry, this visual line. Sorry, visual mode, which allows you to select some text. So you use, you move your cursor to select text. I can move by word. I can move back. I can move to the end of the line. I can move back again. I can even do the find capital P, which moves me to the first capital P on the line. And now with this text selected, I can do all the actions that we were talking about earlier. How do I change this text? I press C, and I change the text. Undo, uh, undoes everything. Uh, how do I delete this? I press D. How do I copy it? I press Y. And then it, it copies the whole thing. Right? So now there's two more like sort of similar modes. That's visual line, which is done by capital V. And there's visual block, which is done by control V. So visual line just allows you, so now you see there's no difference if I'm going back and forth, it's just line, it's very convenient. I want to delete three lines, I just go visual line, select three lines, and then just press delete, and I delete three lines. So visual line is basically visual mode, but you can only select one line at a time. It's much more convenient, so you don't have to go, oh, uh, V, down, down, and then go to the end of the line. So it saves one keystroke in this case. So visual block is the one that's super cool. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. So if you go into visual block, you go down and you go right, it selects text like this. This is something that I don't think, yeah. What happens if I press delete? It just deletes the text. So it selects a square of text, not even like lines, not even characters, it's just a square of text. I can go back by one word, forward by one word, and then just press delete and it deletes the text. So this become, visual block is most useful when you're coding or doing something like editing, I guess, CSV files. Uh, I think there's a CSV file here. So you see now I can go here, I can go here, and I can change everything. Um, let's say I want to toggle everything to small letters. I can go here and then just press the tilde and then everything is a small letter now. So those are the three visual modes. In 
Yes, you can do that as well. So, uh, Vim Cities. So, Control V, select, change, one. Escape. Yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. I think there's some Mac paste thing that's going on. Okay, so I can change all of this. C, hello, escape. Takes a while for mine, I don't know why. Uh, and then hello shows up. So suddenly editing becomes a jigsaw puzzle. Who knew? Okay. So those are the visual modes. Uh, you can open a file, you can open a split. Okay, so now we're going into an even cooler one called macros. So have you ever wanted to repeat a command that you just did? Well, now you can. Uh, okay, so now we can just go back and do the simple one first. So let's say, uh, okay, wait, let me use errors. Let's say I just deleted two words. The simplest thing you can do, I think mentioned by um, you just now, was that you can actually press dot and you can repeat the previous action, which is deleting two words. Yeah. So if I change two words to hello, for example, if I press dot, it changes two words again. Navigation doesn't break this, so if I go here, modal editor, I press dot, it changes two words to hello. So suddenly I'm saving even more keystrokes. Okay, so how about a more complicated way of doing things? So it turns out you can record, oh sorry, let me use errors. You can record what you're doing and then replay that. So pressing Q activates um, like this macro thing. And then let's say I want to save this into a variable called A. So Q, sorry, let me press escape. I try again, Q, A. And it says recording into A, right? So now let me do a few things. Let me delete two words, okay? And I move forward two words and I change it to hello, okay? And I escape. So importantly, back to normal mode and I press Q to stop recording. Now you see it's disappeared. So I can go to this line and replay exactly what I just did, which is delete two words, go forward two words, and then change two words, or change a word by pressing add. Okay, shift two is add, and then A, which is the variable I recorded into, the, the name of the macro. And it's changed. It replayed exactly as I just did. I can go down again, and I can press add A. And repeat again. Can I record like uh, this macro as well? Like two times, two times of the same macro? You can do two at eight. So you can repeat yeah. the number of times. So the if I want to repeat the macro twice, I can type two at A, and that repeats the macro twice. Can we like store uh, like B, C, A? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can record. Uh, you can record Q A. You can record QB, you can record anything that has a key, I think. Q8? Okay, no, you can't, sorry. <laughs> you can record any letter. Yeah, I think it's quite safe to say, yeah. Usually I don't, like these are temporary. When you quit Vim, these reset. So I wouldn't recommend saving this as like, like long time things. It's just very quick editing things. So you don't usually need more than like 26, yeah. Okay, so now we have two activities. These two activities, you can try to download and try them. And in about five minutes, we'll discuss them again. So the first one, um, I gave a clue just now already. It says first three columns, columns. And the second one, you can just use the macro tips that we just learned.
Okay, uh, let's get back to this. Okay, so let me start with part two. So if you download it, you should see something like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you copy paste it. Okay, so how do you select three columns? That is a good question. Exclude the headers. Yeah, I think exclude the headers. So you can see that there's 
A few extra commas here and there. Oh. Are the commas... Okay, wait. We see that there are commas here and there except for here. Wait, actually, how do you do that? Okay, we can try to search for double commas, but there's missing commas also. GG. Okay. We can just, okay, excluding the first row, we can just do control V, which is visual block. Go all the way to this line and then press G. Oops. Okay, sorry. Okay, start again. We can control V, G, up, and then like this. Okay, and then we just delete. I think there will be a few which are out of line. But the rest should be okay. And then now we can just delete this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then I can go to the 16, line 16, delete this. Line 21, uh, delete this. <coughs> uh, 21 capital G. Uh, 10 capital G to go to line 10. Uh, 100 capital G to go to the sun. Yep. So, so again, right, um, to delete the columns, control V. I press capital G to go to the last line and because I can't press L anymore, I just go up by one line and then I just do and just select everything so it looks about right now and then I press D to delete everything then I jump to line 21 get rid of the space jump to line 16 and get rid of the space Yeah, press D to delete. So so the idea was to remove the remove the first three columns. Yeah. Okay, so let me just select delete. Okay, so let's do the next one. So the next one is this file. Okay. Vim emails .txt. Okay, so now we want a macro to extract all the names from this. Okay, so how do we record a macro again? We press Q and let me save this into maybe a uh, call I. Okay, so I'm recording I right now. It says there, recording I at the bottom. So now I notice that, okay, all the names. Okay, so emails are separated by an add character, right? And there's probably no other add character. So I can always just, so remember, we are recording a macro and we want to replay this across all the lines that we see, okay? So try to do things that are compatible with all the lines. So in this case, I know that for sure there'll be an add character, which is we want to delete everything after the add character. So I can just find the add character. Oh, it means we just want the names. So yeah, we want to delete everything behind the, we want to delete the domains. Okay, so how do we delete to the end of the line? We press D and then dollar sign, delete to the end of the line. Uh, let's do something better. We go back to the start of the line and we make this capital letter using tilde. We find the dot. Um, yeah, replace it with a space. Go to the next character and then press tilde to make it. So now we have a beautifully formatted name. So let's make this macro repeatable. We go to the next line and then we go back to the start of the line. So we've done a full cycle, right? Press Q. Shit, which, wait, which letter did I save it in? I, okay, yeah, thanks. So add I. Okay. We have 10 lines. I'm at line three, so about seven to eight times. Seven. Add I. Uh, one more time. Add I. 
And we've successfully extracted the names very quickly. If this was a 200 line file of emails, I could have just done this in three seconds. 200 at I, and we would have been done. Save. So that's the power of macros, and that's like the pinnacle of what we're doing today. And with this, you should be very, very fast in like editing your files already. There's a lot more stuff that you can do, but this is like 80% of the way there. Okay, so um, at, at this point, does anyone have any questions on what we just did? I don't know what's going on behind. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we will look at extending Vim. Does anyone have any more questions? Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on behind. Huh. Okay, so um, there are a few links here. There are a few recommendations, but basically remember that Vim, um, that Vim RC that we talked about at the start. It turns out you can do a lot more things with this Vim RC. So for example, uh, we started off with relative number, which I deleted. But if you use relative number, you can use this thing where you can jump 15 lines down and so on. Um, you can do other cool things. Um, so actually set HL search says that we want to highlight everything we search for. So if you delete that and you go back, you type enable, it actually does not highlight anything. Right. So those are configurations that we can set. What's cool? Oh yeah. And so it turns out you can do a lot more things. And these are just some examples. So this is a guy's Vim RC, uh, the ultimate Vim RC for 10 years. So there's basic.vim. So Vim is configured using this its own programming language called Vim script, which is very bad that most people say, but it's no choice we use it. So this guy has this he's created a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, there are functions. There are commands, so on. And basically, there's a lot of configuration out there that you can sort of slowly learn and pick up and combine together. Uh, for example, this command sets a GUI font, so it looks nicer. Uh, what else is there? You can make custom key maps so that, in, let's say you don't like V, you like B for some reason. You can just change you can just say remap V to B, and then suddenly you can use B for everything instead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So uh, J K escape. So this is one very common one that I used to use. Okay. So uh, if I go back to my VMRC, you can see that basically it says insert mode, non-recursively remap. A non recursively map. Uh, okay, this just means insert mode. So if you see no remap, then it means normal mode. If you see V no remap, it means visual mode. But basically, you're saying that I want JK to be escape. Okay? So now when I go back and I edit again, so I'm just reloading the file. So I go here and I type hello, J. Okay, sorry, there's a timer on this one. So J, K. And it doesn't type JK, it just escapes me. So instead of having to press escape, I can just say blah, 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 JK. And I'm back to normal mode. Yeah, so, okay, the downside to this is you can never type JK unless you wait for the timer. So I can go here, I type J, I wait for a while, and then I type K, and then you can type. Okay? Uh huh. Then you end up in escape mode. Yeah. So yeah. So you see, that's why the I comes in handy. So that is only the case. Um, you only this key this key map is only active when you are in insert mode. So if you are in normal mode and I type J K, it doesn't actually do anything. I am J K. I am J King as expected. This only works when I'm in insert mode. So if I type N no remap or V no remap, okay, you can see that in visual mode, it doesn't work as well, right? I type JK, it doesn't do anything. But if I do V no remap, uh, okay, V no remap, 
I go back, I reload it. Oh, where's hello? Oh, whoops. Okay, I type Vino remap, right? So now I'm in visual mode. I go here, I type JK, it escapes me. So similar idea. Okay, so that's one common one. Yeah, so yeah, so it does get very complex, but the point is that oh the point is that you will pick up these things over time and if you're customizing your own one, most likely you'll be familiar with it already. This guy took 10 years to get this. You don't have to get this immediately. My VimRC was like 10 lines for the longest time until I learned more stuff. What's your VimRC now? I have no VimRC now. Wow. Yeah. So there are... Sorry? I mean, I have this one, uh, the one I just used. Like this one. Yeah, I think the most important one is just syntax enable. <laughs> Okay, so um, so there are actually many distributions as well. So um, so this Neo is actually a new thing. So a while ago, uh, when Vim was on version 7, they actually forked Vim and created Neo Vim, which is a slightly different distribution. Um, and the most important change about Neo Vim is that you can write your configuration in the Lua programming language instead of Vim script. So Lua is a much more established programming language, or rather like, it's much more simpler to understand, um, except that array start at one, but that's another thing. Uh, and it also, also supports LSP, which is now, it's language server protocol, and it's the most common like, autocomplete functionality available today. Most languages have it. So there's NeoVim, and a lot of things are based off of NeoVim, there's LunaVim, uh, looks nice. Looks crazy. There's NV chat. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Looks crazy as well. This is Vim, by the way. This is in your terminal. Oh, uh, hey, is this? This is just VS Code. No, it's in the terminal. Yeah. Yeah. You can. So you can use VS Code with the Vim plugin as well. But this is faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah, you can use VS Code on a server. And I think the point is like, um, Vim. There's an editor Vim and there's the concept of Vim key bindings and it's really up to you what you want to use and what suits you the best. Um, so yeah, so what he's talking about is VS Code Vim, which is a Vim plugin for VS Code. Uh, is it called VS Code Vim? Yeah, this one. So it's VS Code, but it gives you like the normal mode and insert mode and visual mode and stuff. Um, I used it for a while, but it makes, makes VS Code, for me it makes VS Code slightly slower, so I didn't use it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so again, there's like various configurations. There's, uh, I guess, Vim distributions, which are like huge configurations. And there are many things as well. Uh, I think the simplest one to start with, if you want to start configuring, is just adding plugins. So Vimplug is one that I recommend. There's many other plugin managers. So installing this will allow you to install many other plugins. You can see, for example, Vim Ruby or Vim JavaScript or Vim Fugitive or Control P is a very popular extension. Uh, Control P Vim. So again, the space is huge and I encourage, I highly encourage everyone to explore and learn for yourselves because it's very hard to explain over just, just showing. Yeah. Uh, and there's much more features in Vim as well. You don't even need to extend your Vim. Everything is, there's still, still a lot of stuff that we haven't touched on. Um, we have find and replace. We have um, delete insight. Uh, and yeah, so that's all we have for today. Um, oh, there's using Vim outside of Vim as well, which is alongside VS Code Vim, you have Vimium, which is controlling Chrome. I don't use Chrome, but you can control Chrome with Vim key bindings. Imagine pressing J to scroll down your web page. Wow. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Imagine not. I use it. No, I'm not shitting on it. I like it. Yeah. But you don't use Chrome. But I don't use Chrome. That's maybe that's why I'm a bit salty. But sure. 
Yeah, that is Safari. I'm using Safari. Uh, there's Idea Vim, which is for JetBrains. Uh, if you're using IntelliJ, you can use Vim key bindings in your IntelliJ. You should use Vim key bindings. You should. Yes, you should. <laughs> there's Homeroll, which is my friend's app. Oh. Just plugging for him. You can use Vim in your whole Mac. So this is only for Mac, unfortunately. Hmm? Uh, if you're using Vimium, this is Vimium for your whole computer. <laughs> Wait, what? It's what? <laughs> Wait, what does it say? Oh, it's just that. Oh. Okay, so this is home row. Uh, and there's lots of other things, basically. These are all people try to be faster for absolutely no reason. And I think that's in the spirit of NUS hackers, so sure. There's help command. Okay, thank you. We are getting to that. So help, oh, whoops. The help command is very useful. And this is perhaps directly useful. You can help uh, anything. I guess help WQ. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah, so WQ, write the current file and close the window. You can help pretty much anything. I think you can you help W. Yeah, you can help W, which moves words forward. Or oh, control W. Control, you know the open bracket that you said? Control for escape? Yeah. So control, help, control, CTRL. No, no, CTRL hyphen, open bracket. It tells you huh. Okay, yeah, you can control help control that as well, which turns out is just escape. So a lot of things. Uh, there's Vim Tutor. So you can go into Vim, Vim Tutor, enter. Oh, oh it's an app itself, sorry. Vim Tutor. And this is actually just a tutorial for Vim. Uh, now you can see uh, control D goes down by half a page, control U goes up by half a page. Uh, control F, yeah, Control F goes down by one page, so on and so forth. Yeah, oh, and it's even more interactive than what we just did. I can just type 2DD to delete two lines. Oh, you're right. No, my little. Oh, uh, there's Vim Golf. Wait, let's try that. Vim Golf. Yeah, so this one is really about reducing your keystrokes. This is quite fun. You can try it. <laughs> if it loads, yeah. Yeah, there's Vim Golf Challenges. Quick sort. <laughs> okay, yeah, so... Um, yeah, so hopefully this session has encouraged you to learn something new. Try it for fun. If you don't like it, sure, use Emacs. You're, go you're lost to me, but... Uh, <laughs> but Emacs I think I'll... Yeah, huh? Emacs has Vim oh yeah, Emacs has Vim key bindings. <laughs> yeah. The only correct way to use Emacs. No, I'm just kidding. Uh. <laughs> Emacs is like another it's editor. another editor. Like Can I launch Emacs? Does it work? It. Oh, it doesn't work. Yeah. Can check. I'm not sure actually. Vim Copilot. There is, and it's from GitHub themselves. <laughs> yes, it can. Vim truly can replace VS Code with a lot of configuration. Yeah, so that's all we have for today. Um, the us from core team, we're gonna stick around, can ask us questions, just chat with us. Uh, and these hope, uh, please fill up some feedback if you enjoyed today. We have Hacker School and Friday Hacks coming up. For Friday Hacks, it's a really cool talk on startups and another cool talk on Rust. Uh, tomorrow we have anime with Hacker School. Uh, animation, sorry, uh, for beginners. Yeah, so use these links. Can talk to us, chilling around. I will always shoot for Vim, never Emacs. Uh, I'm Raven. Good night. I don't have any questions about about Vim or how we use Vim or anything like that. I'm using Vim for since 2017.